Hello friends, as we have already discussed prebiotic stress and breeding strategy for resistance to biotic stress. So today we will discuss abiotic stress and breeding strategy for abiotic stress resistance. Okay, so let's start. As you are seeing in my field, I, ha I have observed the mechanism for drought resistance in the crop of maize. We can see clearly the leaf are rolled out to reduce the leaf area index and in this way to reduce the transpiration. So there is the mechanism to reduce the water loss in the case of water scarcity in the soil. So this is the mechanism adopted by the plant. We will discuss such aspect in detail. Okay, so now what is the importance of abiotic stress? Actually, abiotic stress affects 90% of the land, which minimizes the yield up to 70% according to Maitri et al. 2012. The major abiotic stress are temperature, drought, excess salt, etc. according to Jaffer et al. 2018. Drought and salt together with low temperature are the major problem for agriculture worldwide according to Abrol et al. 1988 because these adverse environmental factors prevent plants from realizing their full genetic potential. The great concern is that these stress such as drought and salinity will increasingly important due to climate change, land degradation and declining water quality according to Tester and Lang Riz 2010 with Combe et al. 2008. Approximately 24.2% of the world's total geographical area is potentially cultivable but only 10.6% area is under cultivation. So remaining 13.6% of cultivable area is not under cultivation because of being affected by different abiotic stress according to Blum A 1988. So you can see here the abiotic stress is most important since it not only affect a crop plant it also limit the distribution of a crop plant in the globe. So we have to design our crop plants according to these abiotic stress that make our crop plants to survive and perform well under such environmental condition. So in abiotic stress resistance, we will discuss particularly drought resistance. Drought resistance may be defined as the mechanism causing minimum loss of yield in a drought environment relative to the maximum yield in a constant free or optimal environment for the crop. Drought resistance does not exist as a unique heritable plant attribute. The various mechanisms by which the loss in yield can be minimized are grouped into the following three categories such as drought scab, dehydration avoidance and dehydration tolerance. So what is drought scab? Actually drought scab describes the situation where an otherwise drought susceptible variety perform well in a drought environment simply by avoiding the period of drought such as early variety for late season drought stress. We can understand this drought escape by taking an example. Suppose there will be drought in June month and the variety has been matured in May so it will avoid the drought condition and it will be safe. So this is the mechanism of drought escape. Now what is dehydration avoidance? Actually drought avoidance is the ability of a plant to retain a relatively higher level of hydration under water stress condition. It can be achieved 
by reduced transpiration or increased water uptake. The plant avoids the stress by different strategy that includes deep rooting, reduced leaf area, reduced growth duration such as early flowering and mechanism related to increased water use efficiency. So these are the mechanism adapted by plants to survive under drought condition. Now what is dehydration tolerance? Dehydration tolerance of a genotype means a significantly lower level of changes are induced in it than those in another genotype when both of them are subjected to the same level of dehydration. It may be done through the maintenance of membrane integrity such as leakage of solutes from the cell or through accumulation of proline which involved in osmotic adjustment by storing solutes in the vacuole. So these are the mechanism through which the crop plants survive under water stress. Now in this figure we can see the mechanism adopted by crop plants under decreased soil water potential. This is the normal condition where normal soil water potential is exist and this is the abnormal condition where decreased soil water potential is present. In this situation plant accept the response of water stress and perform at cellular level. After that you can see the external morphological change in crop plants and after that you can see the tolerance and survival strategy. External morphological change as we have already discussed such as root development, high root development and reduction in leaf area index. Root de development promote or improve the water uptake while leaf area reduction limits water loss and in this way survival and tolerance. So these are the mechanism. Now what is the source of abiotic stress resistance? So we can get the genes of abiotic stress resistance from land races, wild relatives, high yielding varieties, initial breeding materials and advanced breeding materials. Land races from dry habitats have been used successfully in breeding towards developing open pollinated varieties or hybrids for water limiting environments. This is a very great possibility that you will get the genes for drought resistance in dry land areas and you may get the genes for water logging in from the crop plants grown and area where water logging is the major problem. Abiotic stress resistance may be introduced by genetic engineering also. Now this is the table that showing wild source of resistance to drought and salinity in some crop plants. This is the crop and this is the name of wild species and this is the resistance available for. Okay. Now what are the breeding strategy for resistance to abiotic stress such as drought resistance. So as we have already discussed first of all we have to evaluate our genotypes under non stress or optimal environments to get the genotypes with high yielding potential and after that we have to evaluate our genotypes under drought stress condition so we can get the resistance for drought stress and after that we have to incorporate the drought resistance in our high yielding genotypes and these are the methods through which we can develop the drought resistance or drought tolerance in our crop plants such as the methods includes introduction, selection, 
hybridization followed by selection, mutation, biotechnology, etc. Now this is the story of PUSA chip P10216. Actually, PUSA chip P10216 has been developed by Dr. Bharadwaj Chilapilli from ICR, IARI and Dr. Rajiv K. Vashne from ICRISHET. Actually, this variety is developed by the transferring QTL for drought resistance from ICC4958 to background of PUSA 372. PUSA 372 is the high yielding variety under normal condition but it has no resistance for drought stress and ICC4958 has the QTL hotspot for drought stress resistance. So this drought stress resistance has been transferred through the back cross method, marker shed back cross method to the genetic background of PUSA 372 and the new variety so developed named as PUSA chickpea 10216. So this is the story of PUSA chickpea 10216. PUSA 372 is a leading chickpea variety grown in the central zone, northeast plain zone and northwest plain zone and used as check control variety for late zone condition in the national trial and was developed by ICR IARI in the year 1993. However, the production of this variety had gone for due to drought condition. Therefore, to replace this variety QTL hotspot containing genes for drought tolerance in ICC4958 genotypes of chickpea reported in the year 2014 was in progress in USA 372 background using the molecular breeding. The new variety USA chickpea 10216 has an average grain yield of 1445 kg per hectare with over 11% yield superiority over the recurrent check variety PUSA 372 under the moisture stress condition of the central zone of India. The average maturity duration of this variety is 110 days and it has an excellent green color and weigh around 22.2 gram per 100 seeds. So come on the conclusion, as we all know that the environment is changing very fast and increased temperature, alkalinity, salinity and flooding are the major problem. So in such conditions we have to design our crop plants according to such fluctuation, such environmental conditions that make the plant more and more suitable for growth and for yielding capacity under such environmental conditions. We can transfer the genes through biotechnology, we can incorporate genes through marker state back crossing, we can use the plant tissue culture technique, we can use the traditional breeding methods. So whatever the possibility we have, we, we should use for development of our crop plants according to these environments and only after that we will be able to fill each and every empty stomach in the world. So thank you, thank you very much for listening to me.